Now today then on the last day of the class, our e-commerce with WordPress part two, if we look back, we've had um, eight weeks or seven weeks of, uh, of instruction in WordPress. If you were a beginner to WordPress, you've learned a lot. If you have had some experience in WordPress, you've also hopefully learned a good amount. Uh, most of you that came in here didn't have any experience in e-commerce features and we covered that. There's still a lot that can be covered with WordPress, but at a certain point things get very specific. What do you need to do on your website? What are you trying to accomplish with your online presence? So today we're going to touch on various aspects of an advanced WordPress site because what we talked about previously in, a, in an e-commerce store uh, we saw that a lot of it was handled by the plugin. You just needed to fill in the right setting, uh, taxes, for example, and shipping, and adding our products, and that's obviously up to you, your pricing and your pictures and so forth, coupons and variations. So a lot of that then is very specific. The general idea then of the plugin is universal enough that we were able to cover it, and for individuals, it's going to vary a little bit. So we've got this site that has a shop and products and a checkout and all of that stuff and obviously I can't show the whole process of buying and selling a product that requires to have the PayPal account set up which is pretty easy to do I'm gonna provide you a, a video that I've pre-made for you to go through about creating the PayPal account if you haven't done so before and uh, then managing your products and such as the owner. Um, I can't quite show that either because in our dashboard where we've got store sales, we're not going to be able to see very much on that screen that assumes that a person went through the whole process of buying a product. Perhaps I'll pull up an example from a client's uh, site a little bit later. But on this screen is where you would see then your sales log and this is where it comes into play that now you're going to need to manage all of this stuff because what this screen will show is your product that was sold, who it was sold to and such, but then it's up to you to actually wrap up the product, put it in a, in a shipping box, pay for the shipping and send it and tracking information and so forth. So that's another thing we can't quite do completely together, but I've got a video for you to look at later. And this is the screen where you would be spending time because you'd get emails, you'd say a new sale, and it would tell you who it was and how much it cost and everything. And then you need to do order fulfillment, which is that you need to either send them the product um, or whatever way you're doing your online shop your online shop. You might have a digital product where you don't really have to do much. You just upload your digital products and we saw how to do that. And then when someone buys that digital product they have an email that says download your product here. But order fulfillment with real items that's a little more tricky. It's going to be filled in differently per person but it's all in the sales log screen. And again I don't have much to show you here but I'll show you a, a client's screen a little later. What I do want to show is um, I want to talk about theme customization because we see that this particular theme is very basic. I think it's a good starting point. It's the 2015 theme. It's pretty boring. Um, and when we look at the shop, things perhaps don't look exactly how I want. Some of the words run into each other and some of the styling could be better. And this is the thing with anything regarding WordPress. If the developer doesn't give you a button or a screen where you can make changes, you might not be able to very easily. So if I click on the Customize button of this theme, I have some ability to change a background color and a header image and so forth. But I don't see a lot of detail on how to customize certain things. So if I'm, I'm in my dashboard and I go to Appearance, Customize, this is one common place that a theme developer might give you as a way to edit your theme. 
under Appearance Customize. Sometimes the theme developer creates their own little menu item here with the name of the theme and some sort of customization keyword. It might say, you know, Amazing Theme Control Panel, let's say. The developer created a brand new item here for you to edit your, your design. If it's not under Appearance, it probably has its own menu item, or it might even be under Settings. This is the thing about WordPress, it's open source, meaning people can add to it, but there doesn't seem to be a consensus about how to do that, because sometimes a plugin might appear in the Appearance menu, Settings menu, Tools menu, Dashboard menu, or it may give itself its own menu item. Same thing with themes. There's no consensus, apparently, about where your theme customization settings would appear, but you'll have to look around for it a bit and, and find it. <clears throat> I'm going to try something here. Uh, you don't have to do this, but I'm going to switch over to my other theme that's waiting, the canyon theme. Again, you don't have to do this. I just want to check if you've got a different theme, canyon theme, for example. Uh, I'm trying to look around. What sort of customization do I have for Canyon? I look under Appearance, Customize, and same sort of thing. The Canyon theme <coughs> has a bunch of customization options in its various submenus under Customize. And it looks like there's also, under Appearance, Canyon FAQ. The frequently asked questions because people are always asking where do I change this? How do I change that? It looks like the developers put together frequently asked questions. So the point is. Well, so I wouldn't get to this place unless it's typed. Kind of looking for this, um, the theme that. Well, uh, like I said, this is in the Canyon theme. It's, I it's first in. I first select the Canyon theme. And then under the Canyon theme appearance, I have Canyon frequently asked questions. But if you write that down, that's useful for this theme. That doesn't mean this is going to be the same for all themes. So that's why I said you have to look around on your WordPress dashboard to find the right settings. Sometimes a particular theme, for example, this one is Canyon free version 005, and there's upgrade upgrade theme. Maybe that has better support, better options and such. I'm going to take a quick look. How much does it cost to upgrade this theme? Maybe I like it, but I want more features. $45. That's not so bad. It's a $45 one-time fee, but it's really $45 license fee to use this theme on this one site. If you've got seven sites, you really need to purchase it seven times. Uh, you can't exactly copy and paste the theme from one site to another because they're all tied together with a serial, <coughs> a serial number, basically. And so if you try to reuse the theme more than once, it's going to say, this theme's already been used. So $45 is not that expensive, even if you have multiple, <laughs> multiple themes. There are themes that cost $2,000. That's not unheard of. Um, and then, of course, a custom theme might cost $3,000, $5,000. A custom shopping cart might cost $10,000. But most of the time, you can get by with the free aspects. You just need to use, you know, roll up your sleeves, figure out how it works, maybe check the documentation, and you'll be able to get pretty far. But I want to talk about this customization. I'm going to go back to the plain old 2015. This particular theme's customizations, however, don't tell me anything really about how to customize the shopping cart, which makes sense because the theme is independent of the plugin, and therefore the theme doesn't have any way to customize the shopping cart. It's a separate plugin. Well, if the developer doesn't give you a button to make a change, all is not lost. We have this other thing that we'll look at in more detail under the dashboard we have Appearance Editor. Let's try this. Under your dashboard, let's go to Appearance Menu, Editor. The editor then pulls back the curtain of WordPress to reveal all of the underlying code of everything in your site, themes and plugins. And here then, we have the ability to edit every screen of our project. What does the comments screen look like? You see on the right side, 
Those are the different screens, basically, on your site. We can edit the archives, screen the comments, the basic page template, the search results page, the sidebar, a bunch of things. Let's say, great, I want to edit the sidebar. I don't like what it looks like. If you find on the right side something that says sidebar, sidebar.php, if you click on that, then it says, great, have at it. Here's the sidebar, edit it. But notice, it's all code. So, beneath everything, always, on pretty much every website, there's code behind the scenes, of course. And there could be about um, four different languages in play. I'm going to make a note here. Common website languages. Oftentimes, there's HTML is hypertext markup language, which you would say is the structure of the site, meaning the basic elements. There's a sidebar, there's a footer, uh, there's a main content area, and a, a header. So you could say structure or um, sections of a site. These are the different sections. Header, footer, etc. Sidebar. Another common language then that we might run into um, when dealing with when dealing with uh, websites is CSS. And that's cascading style sheets. This is for the presentation. This is for the styling. Styling and design. So fonts, colors, even things like alignment text alignment, the alignment of a, of a heading, that it's high enough so that it looks good next to the picture. So all of that styling, the way something looks, the presentation of a website. And then we have um, JavaScript, which would be for interactivity. So behavior, feedback, basically meaning a user clicks, something happens. Very, very, very basically. The user clicks on a button, something happens. A pop-up happens. Feedback happens that tells them you added it to the cart. Or um, let's say you're doing, uh, you've got a website where you sell online training for certification, let's say. That whole test to earn your certification, 10 questions, that's all probably powered by JavaScript. A person clicks on an answer, or a, p a potential answer. Is it the correct answer? Yes, no. That's some decision made by a JavaScript, perhaps. And then if it's yes, you move to the next question. If it's no, it tells you error, try again. That's the interactivity. Behavior, feedback. And lastly, you might also deal with PHP. Uh, PHP stands for something, but you don't really need to know it because it's an, it's an old programmer's joke, so never mind. But um, that's uh, very much related to JavaScript, actually. So we'll, we'll say similar to JavaScript, but on the server. And what does that mean? Again, it's technical stuff. So um, let's say also it is uh, behavior uh, built into the website. So it's similar to JavaScript. It just runs differently. It can also make decisions, like someone is taking that test. Was it right answer, wrong answer? Um, if someone clicks on something, it can also give feedback. 
Uh, what, when, why do we need both? Well, JavaScript runs in the browser, PHP runs on the server. Again, uh, why? It's just the way it is. But these four languages are the commonly used languages when you want to work with WordPress. So we can say HTML plus CSS plus JavaScript plus PHP equals WordPress. So if you know all of those languages, you have a lot of experience and you have a lot of ability to go to the appearance editor and make changes here because that's what this expects. This expects you to know code. It doesn't mean you need to know all four of these at all times, but for example, if I want to change the size of a font, which of these might I choose? Which of these four? CSS. Probably CSS. If my shopping cart isn't working properly, which one of these might I look at or use? PHP or JavaScript? It depends. I might have to look at the surrounding code to figure out myself which one to do. Let's say that my footer um, is completely empty. I'm supposed to show a copyright date and such in there. Um, perhaps what language would I look at in that case? Probably HTML. And unfortunately, and fortunately, sometimes you can use the same language to do many things. So maybe if you know HTML enough, you can make it do what you want, even though JavaScript might be necessary sometimes, or maybe CSS might be necessary sometimes. But you, if you can get it done with HTML, it worked. Perhaps you can actually write content on screen with JavaScript or PHP. Those two can also do some aspects of HTML and CSS. So they kind of bleed into each other a bit. They're not fully concretely delineated that you have to use this for that. But best practices are that you use a particular language for a particular task, the right tool for the right uh, job. So just taking a quick look at this um, sidebar PHP file. First of all, it ends in .php, so that's giving me perhaps a clue. I better know a little bit of PHP. And then if I look at the actual editing window here, I see lots of code. PHP, the sidebar contains the main widget area. All these are comments from the developer. Then I see something that says if has nav menu primary or has menu social, etc. So, okay, oh, what's this? Div, that sounds familiar. I learned a little bit of HTML. That's an HTML code. And then class and ID, that should be familiar if I learned some of this. This is CSS. So even in this one file, it's mixing HTML, CSS, and PHP. I don't believe I see any JavaScript from a quick glance, but I see HTML, CSS, and PHP. And so this is the thing about WordPress. It's very powerful, and you always have the ability to customize things exactly how you want. But that often relies on having a little, being a little code savvy, noting, noting a little bit of a few languages. And so I'm not sure if I mentioned it in this class, probably last month, but I'll mention it again. As, an, as a real-world example, in my company, when, when we take on a client to make them a website, we tell them there are three ways uh, to make a WordPress website. Basically, we sell them on three packages, three ways for us to build a website for them in WordPress. One is uh, find a theme, free or premium, and use as is with some built-in customization. So find a theme, either do a search on the WordPress theme marketplace, 
or go to some well-known websites where developers congregate to sell their themes or do a simple search on Bing or Yahoo or Google or whatever, just do an internet search and find WordPress themes. And so then we install it, we set it up, and we do some customization with the built-in customization method with that button that says customize. If the theme author allows it, we'll do it to customize the theme so it looks a little bit more to their specifications. That's the first level. And we will say cost-wise, it's the cheapest. The next level, again, find a theme, free or premium, and then highly customize by an editor. So again, we start with a theme that we might have found on the theme marketplace or a Google search, whatever download it, but then bypass that customization options that the developer gives us in favor for us to get into the code, into the editor, to edit everything that way. It's like buying, you buy a car at the dealer and you can have some options. The dealer says moonroof or not, alloy rims or not, um, you know, built-in Bluetooth or not. You know, the dealer's giving you these options for your car. You say, yes or no, I want them. Okay, now you've got a custom car, but so does a thousand other people uh, instead of 10,000 other people. The next level is, okay, what about we, uh, we get, we buy a car that's, a, uh, that's like an investment, a fixer-upper, a classic car that has seen better days, but I want that car because it's that original 1962 uh, Cobra. And I want to customize it, redo the paint job, put in, you know, original ashtrays and everything, and get it really customized to my specifications, but starting on that classic body. That's like the second level right here. That one, the cost is already more expensive because... Um, that requires knowing a bunch of computer languages, a bunch of programming languages, but it can yield a very customized site. And let's say here, customization. The customization of this, you know, it's basic. It's some amount of customization. If you can change a button on that interface, so can, so can everyone else. So can 20 other people. So can 100 or 1,000 other people. This next level up here of customization is much higher. Because really, if you know the language, you can do what you want. It's still going to be perhaps based on a structure and a shell that is similar to another website. But you've gone in to customize the alignment of things, perhaps, the background colors that were, no lo that were not available to you, behaviors that weren't built into the theme. So it's, again, like taking that original shell of a car or a house and then fixing it up to your specifications. And then the third level, build a theme from scratch. Completely original. No template to start with, basically. From scratch, write all of the code. You start with a blank screen, write the code, basically. That one, the cost of that, is a lot. But the customization, is also a lot. No one else is probably going to have that same kind of theme. It's been written to, uh, specifically for that particular client. No one else has it. A lot of work, a lot of effort to program that. Very expensive compared to the other two uh, methods, but very customized. No one else has it. Question? What proportion of your clients have the vast proportion is number two because we recommend it to them. We also tell them, don't even go for the third option. You're going to get a very customized theme, but you're going to pay a lot. And you're going to spend a lot of the budget just to create the design and such and the customization and the behaviors of your theme without even spending any of the amount of time for other important things as well, such as 
uh, you know, uh, copywriting, you know, writing the text, uh, adding the products, doing social media, all of that stuff. So if you've got a budget of $5,000, you're going to honestly blow it all in just the design of the theme. But if you've got $5,000 and you do number one and number two, then you can balance designing the site, adding the products, writing the text, doing some social media marketing, getting off the ground. So we tell people right off the bat, these are the three levels, and we recommend level two. Level one, if you're really on a tight budget, but be aware you're not going to get a lot of customization. Your site may look like someone else's site. And yes, there's millions of sites out there in the world. You may never run into it, but there is that knowledge that your site will look very similar to someone else's because it's the least customized. Yes? You would put the uh, child theme development number two. Probably that's the only way you would do number two is with a child theme, right? Number two or number three. And child themes are one of the things we'll talk about today, which is a way to customize your theme uh, to make it more robust. Well, three doesn't have a parent theme, right? You're starting from scratch. It doesn't have a parent theme, but if, it, if you are a good developer, you will be pushing out updates once in a while to the theme once vulnerabilities and features are available. So if the user did choose number three and we are still also updating the theme as per our contract, like let's say two years worth of updates, well eventually updates are going to come and you know what happens when updates are applied to the parent theme. So uh, we will talk about child themes, but uh, that's a good advanced question to bring up there for customization. And then each one of these would be multiplied by the number of pages. Well, because it's a theme, it's a template. WordPress uses them as templates. So once you design the original template, you just apply it to all of the, all of the pages, and it's pretty much automatically um, uh, customization. Why do I have so many vowels in there? Customization. Where's my spell check? Um, so yes, um, the uh, this is a big can of worms, and that's why we're going to spend time talking about it because I don't. I'm tired of this basic theme, and I want an, and I want a new theme. But then so does everyone else. So we need to do talk talk about customization a bit. quick show of hands. How many of you have any experience in any of the four languages I mentioned up here? Okay. Uh, how many of you have experience in all four of them? Oh wow, okay. Three of them. Two of them. One of them. See that? So there's a big, there's a big uh, range of, in skills here. And uh, the thing, there's a, there's a quote that I like, and I, and I always butcher it. I forget how it goes exactly. But it's something like, the more I learn, the more I understand that it's a question of time than intelligence. So if I have the time, I can learn a lot. It doesn't matter that perhaps I don't think I'm as smart in PHP as I think my peers are. If I have the time that to, to devote to it. So all of these things here, I, I can learn these languages. It might take me some time, but if I have the time, I can get to that goal. And so if I look at this and I'm daunted, that looks complicated. It is at the beginning, just like any, any endeavor that you want to take on. But with time, it's not so complicated to drive anymore, or to balance your checkbook, or to write some code. But you need the time. Yes. Quick question on the uh, HTML. Uh, does that take? Uh, does WordPress ex accept external style sheets, or is it all inline? External on the same server or separate server? Um, on the same server. Yes, because um, uh, it'll it'll definitely do that because we do have inline, embedded, and external CSS ability. So basically, any. Uh, it's very robust, so any language t can technically be on the server or off the server. Oh, okay. yeah. okay, so in order for us to to make any changes, I sort of have to also talk about a plugin, but I guess before that, let's. Um, 
Let's try something here. On on the on the visit site of the of the site on the front end, you see that there's the design, and then at the very bottom, because I've got the 2015 theme, at the very bottom it says proudly powered by WordPress. I would like to change that. There's no button anywhere in the interface that says to remove that or to change it. But if we explore the code a little bit, this is one of the things that we can change relatively easily. Let's check this out. Here under the appearance editor, if you look on the right side, these are the templates, these are the pages, the screens of our site, and there's a screen called, uh, or should be called, uh, footer. See this? Footer. Footer is a common element of a website. It's at the foot. It's at the very bottom of, of the website. And even though that powered by WordPress is not technically all the way at the bottom as a foot, it normally is because depending on the amount of content it pushes it down. But uh, one common thing that we can change is the footer in a WordPress site. So here then, go ahead and click on footer. And you'll see a bunch of code. A lot of it might not be familiar, but some of it does kind of make sense in general. We see something that says footer, uh, div, etc. Again, this is not a class where we can get into a lot of detail about coding. That's for other classes. But if I kind of poke around a little, a little bit more, I see that there's a line that says proudly powered by S2015 WordPress. Proudly powered by WordPress. And so if I have a little bit of experience in HTML, this is a mishmash of both HTML and PHP. PHP is, is, a, is dynamic, as is JavaScript. PHP can make things happen dynamically. They can change whenever necessary. And so when we write HTML, basically the HTML that is written is set. There's a footer here, the end. There's a header here, the end. There's a link, the end. Head, uh, HTML content is basically set. But JavaScript and PHP can reset, can rewrite that code. And that's what's happening here. Because if you have any experience in HTML, you know the A tag is to make a link. href is to set the link. That's plain HTML. But then we see PHP injected in there. And PHP then dynamically can load a different kind of a website. So I'm seeing a website there, wordpress.org. And then I'm seeing the text, proudly powered by WordPress. That little symbol there is being substituted by WordPress. And then a text. So if we wanted to change this to make it say something else, Let's do this. You should select the line that starts with this angle bracket A. Select it until we get to angle bracket A. That's one line of HTML code that says proudly powered by WordPress. That line right there, we're actually going to change it. We're going to select it and then delete it before you delete it. The thing about HTML is, let me ask you this, how many of you are comfortable lifting the hood of your car and getting in there to work? Very few people. Same thing with HTML. We've, we've popped the hood, we're about to change some spark plugs. That may or may not be easy. We're about to change the oil. That may or may not be easy for you. So same thing here. We're about to edit the internals of our website. And it is true, unfortunately, that one wrong character can break your whole site. Not one command, not one line, one character. If I was deleting all of this stuff and then checked my site, my site might be broken. Can anyone tell why? This angle bracket, this stray angle bracket, tags open and close. Open and close. Here it opened, it didn't close. So therefore, it's waiting for the command to complete, in a sense. And so that one character, that one stray character, could break my whole site. 
there's many instances of that, that one character could break the whole site. So together, us that I'm showing you what to do, and in the safety of WAMP, where with a test site that is not real, we can play with this stuff. But on your own real site that's online and you're making money online, um, I wouldn't do this without having the safety net, the safety net of uh, of WAMP, of copying your site off of your server and playing with it on your home computer and making mistakes and fixing them and then applying that, what you learned, on the real site online. That's what we do for our company when necessary. When we have to edit any of this deep internal stuff, we make a copy and, and work with it on a local computer. We do that even before we launch the site. We don't have the site live on the internet for everyone to see our mistakes. We work on a local site when it's already when the client has said let's go for it then we upload it on a real server so saying that um, let's select that line make sure you selected everything the angle bracket to this closing angle bracket and press delete and here let's write copyright 2015 your name or your company or whatever you want Victor Campos LLC. Why not? I wanted to say something else besides the proudly powered by WordPress. So just to confirm, you should still have this question angle bracket up here. That's a pair from up there. And then it should start the next line, slash, uh, angle bracket slash div, and then it continues. That's what should be right there. We replaced the original code with our own new code. Uh, this is plain old HTML. If you make any changes to any of the screens here under Edit Theme, the editor, you have to then remember to click at the bottom, Update File. So it's Update File and then visit site. Update file saves your changes. Make sure you do that. And then visit site. And now your home screen should say at the bottom, copyright 2015 Victor Campos. If I go to the about screen, it also says copyright 2015 Victor Campos. Every screen now has that copyright. I didn't have to edit on every screen. I just needed to edit it in the original template file and that's how WordPress works based on templates the footer template then is used on every page throughout your whole site automatically raise your hand if that worked cool. anyone need a little help is there a way to roll back um, unfortunately to not there's no built-in WordPress functionality to, to undo that. There is for blog posts and uh, page posts and such, but not for this. This is very high level, uh, advanced, and they don't have that feature, unfortunately. Perhaps on a future version they'll include that, and there's probably plugins that will take that role. Um, I, haven't, I don't have any that I can mention, but um, yeah, it's not perfect. Yeah, you can make your own backup, copy it from that screen, paste it somewhere else mm -hmm. for safekeeping. Word, notepad, etc. for safekeeping and make the change and in case something goes wrong, bring the code back from where you copied it. Extra steps, but perhaps they'll include a better system built in later. Yes. I'm not sure why, I don't see that 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 part that you just deleted there, you're, uh, you're using a canon thing, right? No, I went with the 2015. Uh, yeah, I actually, I went to the 2015, I still didn't see it. Mm -hmm. I changed it. This is it, 2015. Okay. When you made a change, you made a change in the other file, so you have to make it again from this one. Yeah, and then this one. Yeah, delete that, and then I can copy it again. Um, mm -hmm. um, 
something. Okay, so that's that's one one change. I want to go back to the editor to this to the footer again to make a couple more changes. If we go back to uh, dashboard and then appearance editor and back to the footer. So my code is still there <clears throat> as I expected it. <clears throat> I made those changes and now it says something else besides what it came with. So this is what I'm saying that we have this full capability to make any changes we want if we understand the code and what we're editing. And this is a whole world that opens up. You could learn for four weeks, for eight weeks, for 52 weeks nonstop HTML. Just HTML just CSS, just JavaScript, just PHP, all of these languages are so full and complex and powerful that you can spend all your time just learning one language and getting good at it. But if you are able to mix all four of those, uh, you'll be a very powerful web developer. Now you might say, I just want to sell my products. Great! Hire someone that knows what they're doing to design your site, and then you um, sell your products. Um, Let's edit a little bit more here. Copyright. Okay, I want to add the copyright symbol. The copyright symbol, that little C in the circle. So let's write here copyright and then space. I want to add the little C right here, but not the plain old C. That's not the copyright symbol. I want to add the copyright symbol, which is going to be this HTML code. I'm going to type the ampersand, which is the AND symbol, which is Shift 7 on your keyboard. A little and symbol, the ampersand, the word copy, and then semicolon. This little unit together, ampersand, copy, semicolon, no space all together, that together then will get translated into the copyright symbol. This is an HTML character entity, which is the code to make the symbol of copyright. I'm going to update it and visit site. You should you should visit site on a separate window just so that you're not going back and forth. I've got one window for editing and one window for viewing. And now on the footer, little copyright symbol, professional. We have a variety of uh, symbols that we can that we can add to our documents like this. Um, so just for fun, here I'll add one called hearts. Okay, I'm going to give you a few right here off the top of my head just for fun. Try these. Write a few of these. Ampersand hearts, semicolon, space, ampersand yen, semicolon, space, ampersand euro, colon, uh, semicolon space, and ampersand e, acute, semicolon. Some of them might, perhaps you get an idea what they'll look like and some not, so go ahead and write them, update the, update the file, and check on the on visit site and see what they convert into. What is that one? Uh, I think it's N N tilde. I think I don't have all two thousand memorized, but um, let's, let's see if that one worked. I'm going to save it, or I'm going to update that is, and then visit site, and then they get translated. 
right there. Hearts is a little heart. Yen is the yen symbol. Euro is the euro symbol. E acute is the little is the letter E with the accent mark to the right because there's one to the left. And then N tilde is the enye, which is the N with the little squiggle. Right there. These are just a few that I have memorized that might be useful. Well, you don't have to have them all memorized because I can I can give you this. If you go to this website, w3schools.com, this is a website where you can go and learn for free HTML, CSS, JavaScript, and PHP. So once again, it's not a matter of intelligence, it's a matter of time. And if you have the time, here's a great resource for free for you to learn all of those and many more web languages at your own pace, lesson by lesson. And then you take a quiz at the end and you get a certificate. You get a cool uh, certificate that you uh, finish the HTML basic or advanced certificates, and that looks good on a resume if you need to do that. It's also useful um, for yourself if you want to get educated in this stuff. But I bring this up because this is where you can learn all of that, and also you have um, somewhere references. Here we go. On the top menu you have references and you can look up the uh, uh, HTML symbols right here, character sets, car sets, HTML symbols. And right there you can look them all up. You'll see the yen symbol and euro and the A circumflex and all of those. So HTML symbols, this is under references. So it says, okay, mathematical symbols, there's a few of them. Here, view the full math set. So there's mathematical symbols that everyone forgot how to use. Here's the Greek alphabet. I want to write various Greek letters. Here's some symbols. Copyright, the registered symbol, the euro, trademark. You might want to do that, and it's simply ampersand trade. Some of these have a simple entity name, which is memor memorable, and some of them have a number. There's hearts, which is also number 9829. Full currency, full arrows, full symbols reference. So for example, you can do an umbrella. These are going to be done with the code, not with the not with the um, not with a not with a built-in name. Okay, one thing that it doesn't quite explain, here I did the Ankh symbol, that's an ancient Greek, uh, ancient Egyptian symbol. One thing that it didn't, ex didn't seem to explain in this, in this documentation here, it looks like it assumed you know a little bit about how to do this already, but it looks like it didn't explain it, you should make a note that this is how you use it. It's going to give you an, a couple of numbers, and it's going to be the first number here, the decimal number but you have to write it in this format. Um, ampersand, number symbol, then the number, then semicolon. So notice these that are very easy to remember is just ampersand, the word, semicolon. But those that are simply a number, you have to put the number and the number symbol. And then they will get translated into the appropriate symbol. So right now we were editing some HTML. 
we were using one of the languages to change the structure of the document. Let's look at one other little thing, CSS, then we'll take a break, then we'll get more in depth, because this is a big topic. What I want to do is, um, I've worked with a little HTML, which is the structure. I want to work with a little CSS, which is the design. Let's say I want to change a color here. So this is how we can write some code to change the color. Let's do this. On this same line where we wrote this copyright, we're going to write the the less than symbol, which is the angle bracket to the left, and then the greater than symbol, which is the angle bracket to the right, it's shift comma and shift period, because a, a, the comma key gives you comma, but shift comma gives you the angle bracket. And the period gives you period, but shift period gives you the angle bracket. So all of our, or most of our tags start this way. Notice angle bracket, angle bracket. Angle bracket, angle bracket, angle bracket, angle bracket. And inside the angle brackets is where we actually write the HTML code, which will be span. In short, we're going to create a span, which will allow us to change the color. And most tags have a pair. Um, Let's see an obvious place right here. We've got footer tag, and then we've got slash footer tag. So the footer content begins here and ends here. So tags are about pairs. You start the footer tag, you end the footer tag, and everything in between is a footer. Right here, we're going to start the span tag. And then we need to end the span tag to say, let's change the color of the copyright and only the copyright, not everything else. Because we started the span code, but we haven't ended it yet. So I'm going to end my span, my span code after the little, the last code right there before slash div. I'm going to write again, angle bracket, closed angle bracket, slash span. So span slash span. In between those two tags, I'm going to change the color of this via CSS. That's still HTML. I'm setting up structure. But now in that structure, I'm going to say make this with a yellow background or a pink background or a drop shadow background. That's style. So therefore, inside the span tag, right after the letter N, before the angle bracket, I add a space. We'll write style equals quote end quote. So this is CSS. I'm about to style. I'm about to change the look of this because the theme said white background, black text. But I can say yellow background, pink text. I can override the built-in style with my own code. Obviously, this is taking more effort than going to a screen and clicking red text. But if the developers never gave you that option, this is the only recourse you have, editing code. And yes, if you've never done this before, this is like going to the moon, going to Mount Everest on the moon, because it seems impossible. I don't know anything about code. Again, it's not about intelligence. It's about time. You, if you have time to learn a little bit of this, you'll be able to do it. And so what I'll write here in the quotes, and then we'll take a break, background dash color colon pink semicolon. That's sort of human readable. It seems that I'm about to change the background color to pink, which is exactly what's going to happen. But it needed a little bit of this HTML and CSS code set up, code set up in order for me to actually accomplish it. I'm going to update it, visit site, and if I get a pink background, great, I'll take a break. If it didn't, call me over, we'll see what went wrong. But this is a little taste, the tip of the tip of the iceberg of HTML and CSS when editing a theme. And this is what I would say is the level two of development that we offer the client. We'll go in and make all of these changes. This is obviously, again, a very simple change, 
but with some knowledge you can make this left column suddenly now be on the right column duplicated and you can do all of these things that the developer never intended but that you can do because this is open source it's available let's see if mine worked there we go pink background a nice shade of Pepto-Bismol so if your code worked here it is again it's 143. Let's take a 10 minute break. If it didn't quite work, uh, call me over, but we'll be back at 153.